Okay. I think given how many people are already online and the fact that it's just ticked over to 10, um, I'm going to get started. Uh, hopefully you've just seen a little notification pop up on your screen that a recording of this information session has just started. Our intention is to be able to distribute this recording um, after this session to anyone who wasn't able to make it. Um, if you do have any questions during the session, please feel free to put them in the chats, probably the easiest way. Um, and at the end of it as well, we're happy to take questions, but it's probably worth just waiting towards the end in case we cover off something that you were going to ask as we go on. So let's get into it. Um, my name is Laura Baldwin. I am Manager Policy and Advice with State Records New South Wales. Um, John Weinberg, our communication specialist, is also online and so are our partners um, from Poncho eLearning and eTechnologists and we'll introduce them a little bit later in the presentation. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we're all meeting today. Personally, I'm coming from Darawa country um, and I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present. Can we move on to the next slide, John? Perfect. So hopefully everyone here today is aware of why you're here. We're here just to talk about the SCORM dispatch solution. So um, we have now successfully tested the SCORM dispatch solution with two public offices. They've been able to embed that in their own learning management systems or LMS. So we're going to cover sort of how that works uh, today. I'm going to talk a little bit about just why we're using this particular method. And then Tiffin from eTechnologists is actually going to demonstrate how you would go in and download those SCORM packages. Um, so as I said, we've already tested with, we've done like a small test with two public officers. We're now broadening the scope. So anyone who's indicated interest, I think there's about 20 public officers we're now inviting to participate. Um, following this session, we're going to provide you access to the files sort of straight away so that you can embed them in your own LMS and start trialing. Um, you are welcome to go live with this whenever you would like. I'd suggest just given the time of the year that you'd probably want to hold off until early 2025, but you know your organisations better than I do. So that's very much up to you. Uh, and we plan on, we'll put some more information on our website in early 2025, once sort of everyone in this testing pool, or at least the majority have embedded it. And we're just really confident that any little niggles that were left over have been ironed out. Right, let's move on. Perfect. So the way that this um, SCORM dispatch distribution model works is essentially you'll be able to download SCORM files, but these SCORM files almost act as a little bit of a window. So you still embed them the same way that you normally would into your LMS, but rather than holding all the content themselves, they actually point you to the content which is held, uh, hosted in our training portal. I should declare I'm not the most technical person, so Tiffin will be able to provide a lot more sort of technical expertise around how that actually works. Um, you can just use my very basic language for now, <laughs> talking about the theory of it. The benefit of this mod model is that you will still retain complete oversight on completion statistics. You'll be able to set the SCORM files as um, mandatory. It's essentially as if you have the SCORM files yourself in your own LMS. So everything there should still operate the same way it always does. Um, you have the ability to add your own organisation specific content and sort of bookend it. So you could put your own content at the start and at the end of the file, but you wouldn't be able to edit the file itself because you don't actually have the core content. You really just, it's a window to where the content is held elsewhere. The benefit of this model for us is that we can make sure that the content remains current. So if there's a change in legislation, a new requirement that comes in, if we get some feedback and realise that there's something that needs to be tweaked in the training, we can update it centrally. And whenever you're accessing the module from your own LMS, you'll get the latest version of the content. Um, it also gives us a little bit of an advantage just because we can receive some basic completion data which ties in really well to this next slide. So good timing, John. Um, and that is just to let you know that 
uh, signing up for this process does provide state records with a small amount of personal information for your staff that are completing the modules. So when you embed the SCORM packages, we don't get anything, but as soon as someone enrolls, a uh, staff member enrolls in a state records e-learning module, the system automatically collects the account name. So it's generally a first and last name of the staff member. So we would know their name, we would know what public office they're from. And we also receive sort of like an email address, unique ID sort of thing, but it's not actually their normal email address. It's something that's sort of system related. So it is a unique ID, um, but it's not something that would be meaningful in an external context. As you would expect, all of this data is going to be held in accordance with the State Records New South Wales privacy policy. Um, and if you do want to talk more about that specifically and maybe have a look at an example of what would come through, I'm really happy to have that discussion with you offline. Um, so please feel free to follow up with us. If you were to sign up using the um, learning management system that State Records has, so if you weren't to embed it using this format, but you were to go directly to it, we would collect similar information. If not, we'd collect a little bit more because we'd also be asking about job description and that sort of thing. Perfect. Access requirements. So just in terms of how do you get access to the SCORM files, um, you will need a State Records New South Wales Learning Portal account, which I'm assuming most of you have probably already signed up for. It's free. It's just how you get on um, to see what modules are available and you can log in directly through our own LMS. You will need to have your account nominated to be able to access the SCORM dispatch dashboard. So everyone that we invited through this process, um, Tiffin's already gone in and given you access to the SCORM dispatch dashboard. So if you were to log in now, you would actually see that. Um, you'll also need your LMS domain to be whitelisted. Um, you would need to send that through to us. Tiffin will talk a little bit more about how that works, but it's just to make sure that um, when the domain is trying to seek access to those um, files that that's enabled. Um, and of course, you can gain access by emailing us and we will um, liaise with a technologist to make sure that that access is possible. So I think that's probably all I need to say in terms of initial high level information. And then hopefully Tiffin's online and I'll be able to hand over to him to do a little bit of a demonstration of the solution. I am. I am, Laura. Perfect. Hello, hello everyone. So I've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a slow internet here, so I just uh, switched off my camera. But my name is Stefan, as Laura introduced me, and I'm just to quickly show you how simple this process is. Uh, there, there are two things there to, to, to think about is you need two things to get these columns dispatched. One is you need to let uh, um, Laura and the team, um, uh, and then number two is provide your domain. So for the system to recognise your LMS, you need to provide the domain. That score is going to be is going to be um, plugged in. Now I'm just to quickly sh share my screen and walk you through. This is a very simple and quick one. Uh, let me just uh, share screen. Hope I've got a permission to do so. Yeah, I think I've got that. All right, can everyone see my screen here? Yes. Yes, we can. Yep. Yep, cool. So this is the homepage of the Train Safe uh, Digital Commerce State Records uh, portal. As you can see there, I think most of you, if not all, have seen this already. Or what you need to do, now you've done step number one, you've, you've got in touch with John and Laura about uh, uh, wanting to, to plug in uh, the scores from this LMS, that's number one. Number two, you've also provided your domain. Those domain names and your uh, details come across to our end, and then uh, we do the rest. One thing you can do as well is you can jump into the system, uh, register yourself over here. So if you go into login here, if you haven't got an account here, just create an account. So once you set your information to Laura, that that's easier for us. We just give you permission to uh, to be able to dispatch uh, the scores. Now, once you've got that set, you've done that number one, number two, simple, this come here, and then just uh, 
log in. So I'm going to log in as a dispatcher. So I did that. I did follow the process. I did send my my um, details already in my domain. Now I'm free to go in there to so jump in there. Just click log in. You're in. So that means you've done number one, number two. And uh, Laura's side, they've already acted on that. They've given you permission. As soon as you log in there, things change and you'll see it there. For example, my name is Scorm there. You can see hi, Scorm. And then there's a, a, a bit of a notch up at the top there. Uh, you can read that. And these are the Scorms that we've got under the platform that you can dispatch to your LMS. Simple. If you want to dispatch to all here, you can go, just click all of them. But this is how you do it. Say, for example, I just want to uh, dispatch this one here. Yeah, rule number eight. Oh, let's check number one here. Just re record keeping concept. I'm just going to click on that. Boom. You can see there it's downloaded. That's step number two. So you've got to the folder where that score has been downloaded to. So do your, it would be in a download folder. In my case, it's here. You can see it downloads there. Yep. Yeah. And then you just got there. You've got that file there. Now, can I now see my test score site? Yes. Yeah. So this is where I'm going to plug in this score that I've just downloaded. So this is my site. I've done that. I've got that in my downloads folder. Easy. Just going to go in there, turn editing on. This, this is the more LMS for me. That's my site. And I'm going to go drag that score. And that's going to be different depending on your LMS um, and how you you can upload, you can drag, you can do whatever. But whatever you do, we're going to go to the same destination. So I'm just going to drag that in my case. I'm going to go boom, put there. Sorry, it's the. Uh, up here. For those, for those who use Moodle LMS, will be familiar with this. A lot not not still have different like canvas and blackboard to whatever elements you use will have the different ways of doing it now i've got my scorm package there that dispatch there can sit there now if i click that trying to open it boom simple that's done there it's going to go to the enter the scorm package is loading so you can see now that you look at the url there it's a different url i'm on trendself.com slash test that's my site there. It's just a subdomain sort of, and that's playing there. So that's pretty much the same of what you need to do. What we, we would recommend you to do, and this is very important, is to set the completion settings. The reason being is at the end of the day, we want to get the completion settings. So once you've done this, if I jump in here as a student, for example, or as Elena, sorry, so if you jump in as Elena, uh, this is in this website, as soon as I click that score there, this registered registers back to to train self here, back to here. And I'll show you how it looks. So I just want to show you what Laura was talking about, that your first name and last name will be captured by this LMS and your uh, sort of um, unidentified email address. Uh, show you how that uh, looks. So maybe just let me just go back here. Uh, so I'm just going to log out here for now. Let's go clear. Log in as me now. Uh, okay. Good keeping. Okay, I think this should be fine. Let's go just domain there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is how it would, it would look like. So as soon as your learner from your department jumps in, jumps in uh, in here and and opens the SCORM package, that's what we get on the, the other end and on this website here and the strict records. That's how we get it. So you can see there your email address. So your learner's email address is encrypted so we can't we can't you know we can't see it so the only thing that is captured is the first time last time in that email there we're not we're much interested in where that's coming from so, so we can get the statistics from this uh, the from the set records end and that's it really simple as that 
So three steps here. One, you just log in. Two, click on the, the module that you want. Three, get 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 the um get 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 this file and then put in your in your um in your LMS. Now, one thing that I wanted to stress, uh, I think I stopped this midway through, is make sure that you set completion settings so that we can you so that you can track the completion. So for example, for those using the Moodle LMS, very simple. You just go all the way down here, conditions and add requirements, and then complete it. Because this scores have been the developer of this scores have been set to complete it. That's the most important thing. And if you're using Canvas, same. If you're using uh, Blackboard, same, so that we can get those statistics. I think that's pretty much it. Understood? Simple. Any question for me? That's really great. Uh, thanks for that information. Um, I just got a, uh, just got a question, it's more like a section about the EVE done in our council. Uh, we've used the SCORM files and Candice is here from our council, Campbelltown Council. But we've added a quiz to each one of those two modules, email mm -hmm. management as well as record keeping and you. Uh -huh. uh, and that made it a bit more complex for us to ascertain completion. Yeah. So um, I guess a uh, lesson learned for other people <laughs> is <laughs> to, to verify whether that's actually going to help or hinder your results. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure whether if we just uh, upload the modules that come from state records would have been just the easier solution for us uh, because we've been having difficulties trying to get um, uh, an understanding of who's completed what. Um, and it's been been a bit challenging, that's all. So yeah, and I guess that the, um, the what you were showing there on the screen uh, didn't get your name, sorry, the person who was talking no, to you. Okay, Tiffin. Tiffin, um, you're 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 referring to because it's multiple different systems that we we all use. Yeah. Mm. Um, different LMA systems, yes. Okay, so the, the the functionality that you've applied there to, you know, get that reporting uh, properly done, that applies to all systems. Like our system is Pulse, so I'm not sure if that's. Mm -hmm. We could we couldn't set a completed status, um, Claudio. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So it's you, it's more like you, I put it into our system than than the um, the word the way that the SCORM files have been put together. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's the other end of it. Cool. Oh, good. Mm. Uh, uh, okay. Um. I'm not too sure much about the first, to be honest, but uh, um the Every LMS, to my knowledge, has that completion settings because that's the uh, the best way you can track the completion. So it would have completion settings. Um, I'm more than happy to assist you uh, if you want me to at some stage. You can just book me in and I'm more than happy to assist you on how you can set those completion settings in your LMS. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's going to help. And obviously, thank you for your offering. Mm. Um, we've we've rolled out this the training uh, back in mid October, I think, mm -hmm. with um, a deadline, and obviously that wasn't met. Um, we're still trying to track the numbers as far as like who's completed mm. or not. But if 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 your assistance can help us get the reporting yeah, can, a bit more updated, meeting, that would be good. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Just on that question, could I just ask, do you get, um, with your other courses in your LMS, do you get something that says that they're complete or not complete? Yeah, yeah we do. But we, we do get it once. Um, you can run a report and it will tell you the status, whether it's completed in progress or, but you can't, as I think, as Stephen showed, there was a, a button that he could actually set to um, completed status. We didn't have that functionality um, to set it, and um, some, some yeah. staff struggled with. Um, so what we did was with each of the modules, we rolled out two modules, mm. and with each of them we added a quiz 
an additional oh, okay. information or quiz to it. So in other words, when we're doing reporting now, we're actually needing to report on four different, um, there's four different reports that we need to draw from. So I think we we obviously just complicated the, 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 the um, yeah. what's his name ourselves. Um, so we wouldn't recommend you adding anything else, but just the SCORM package. But also initially when we went into the package, some staff couldn't close the, if they didn't, um, they would finish it and they would, they did screenshots to show that they were completed, but even so it still didn't show in our record keeping that it was completed. So right, they this, needed to go um, to the top left hand corner or right hand corner or something and click out of it. Whereas at the bottom it says, we didn't get that field at the bottom where it showed you can um, submit or something. Um, I'm yeah. trying to see if I've got a picture of what. Sorry, sorry to interrupt Candace. I think this might actually be a really good offline session. Uh, if okay. you and Claudio could have that with Tiffin. And then I've noted that there's a couple of other organizations who are on the same platform and who'd benefit from yep. um, the outcome of that session, but it might be more sure. helpful just to have an initial smaller catch up and try to work through yeah. it. And then if we could sure. share the findings more yeah, broadly. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So that would be really great. And um, the yep. people who've put comments down saying that you're interested, we've noted that and we'll be able to share those that outcomes. Hopefully we can get that sorted sooner rather than later. Obviously, people who've already had the opportunity to embed it in the LMS might be able yeah. to just to sort of speak to it a little bit more because we can all learn from it. Yeah, yeah, sense, yeah, I just think that's the fastest yeah. way through. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Just um, if I could just add to that, I can see a few comments on different LMSs people are using in the comments. Um, LMSs are generally fairly simple um, things in the way they work and interact with SCORM packages, and they are they're usually universal. So it doesn't usually matter what LMS, if it accepts SCORM, they should all accept SCORM in the same way. And I agree with, I agree with Tiffin that um, I haven't come across an LMS that doesn't um, track completion in a SCORM file. So if there's some setting or something that isn't there, um, whatever the LMS is, uh, Tiffin is uh, really well placed to be able to troubleshoot that in the next session. Thank you. Okay, I can see the question here. We're moving to a different LMS next year. Yes, if you move to a different LMS, the most important thing is just keep, keep, keep Laura and John updated on your domain. That's all. Okay. Um, not sure about the pronunciation, but Chiti, is it? Yep. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Chiti from NSW Health, um, Haiti Health Education and Training Institute. So I thanks for thanks for demoing it, Tiffin. So one quick question from me is, uh, as uh, Kevin mentioned, uh, any SCORM package should be interoperable. Interoperable, uh, interoperable meaning it should, it should play plug and play in any learning management system, any SCORM compliant learning management system. With regard to that completion status, normally any SCORM package uh, in SCORM data elements, there is an attribute called, there is a data model called lesson status. So when the learner is exiting the score, the, the module or the SCORM package, it sends a status to the learning management system indicating how the learner is exiting the score whether they completed it, incomplete, passed, failed, these, these could be one of the statuses. So Moodle and some of these systems might have settings to override that, to override that where, where the LMS can ignore the status that comes from the, Scrum, uh, from the Scrum module and the LMS can override that, right? But, you know, for in our instance, we, where we use um, more advanced learning management system, we do not have that, we, do not do that through in the LMS. Mm. Uh, so normally when we, we develop SCORM modules as well for the New South Wales Health, so we normally set that status. Normally the content stakeholder or the content owner defines when the module should be sending the a completion status to the learning management system. That could be after completion of a quiz or that could be completion of set of interactions within the module or that could be after watching watching of a complete video or, you know, one of the scenarios. Yes, uh, as part of the investigation, I'm happy to work with you guys uh, to look at uh, that completion logic. That's one part. The other part is, you know, Tiffin uh, mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, there is a, he's able to retrieve email address. May I ask with the SCORM data model, there is no, I don't think there is any, any attribute 
uh, where the other party or the content owner can capture the learner email address from the LMS is at the end of the day, the Scrum packages are going to be hosted within the learning management systems. Like that could be New South Wales Health or that, that could be Transport or Moodle or, or any other third party learning management system. I don't think there is any attribute that sends a learner's email address to, to a third party. Um, but it, it might be there in Moodle, but uh, I, I, I don't think, yes, you, they can re, retrieve student name student first name and last name. I don't think there is any attribute that sends um, an email address to the third party. Again, if you guys have any dependency on that email address, I would suggest to use that as a test case as part of this this process. OK, yeah, um, I, I think I got you. But um, let me just uh, clarify the last bit. Uh, this LMS, uh, this text records LMS, with, with uh, a specific feature that talks to your LMS, so as an API. So those yeah. APIs, yes, those a APIs, they're the ones that we've set to grab your uh, domain and encrypt, also, I would say, and decipher your, or like disguise, maybe, let me put it in a very plain, disguise your email address, because we're not interested and we don't want to keep your personal mm. records. So that's how it works. It's not that you see there's a Moodle LMS, but we've done uh, we've done a massive work behind it to develop APIs to talk to other LMSs. Yeah, so the API yeah. APIs are there in any Scrum package. So uh, that's when the module is integrated. That's the API that talks. Uh, you know, as you know, the the Scrum package is developed by you guys, which is not developed within the learning management system. So mm. the Scrum package and LMS talk to each other through the API. Uh, mm. But with that API, the restriction is there is the the API has restrictions as well. And one of the restriction restriction is you know they cannot the API cannot read email address of the learner. He, mm. The API can read the learner's name, but not email address. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Can I suggest again, just in um, for the sake of time, Chiti, it sounds like you're quite across how this works. You will get access to be able to download the SCORM packages after this session. Um, if you're interested and willing to do so, I'd recommend it might be worth um, downloading a package, embedding it, maybe just getting yourself or, you know, a yeah. test user to enroll you can even contact us we can send you a copy of everything that's come through so you have full oversight over what we can see we're sure, obviously sure. happy to share your own you know your own organization's information yeah. back so you can see what's come through and you can play around and see if that works for you yeah, i think good. yeah for um obviously for the people at campbelltown you have experience so you need to have a discussion but for people who haven't um played around with the system yet i'd say probably next steps, which conveniently there's a screen for this. Um, thanks, John. Um, next steps would probably be, you will have access to the dashboard. So I'd suggest um, it, sending an email to um, info at trainself.com.au just to request your domain to be whitelisted. You can have a go at embedding it. Obviously don't roll it out to everyone at this stage. You need to test it internally and make sure that it does work for you. As I said, feel free to contact us if you want to see what information has come through or if you just want to have some more discussions about it. This is obviously quite a general session. Um, and our intention following this as well, once we start to see public offices actually implementing this, so I'm guessing it's going to really be rolled out in the new year, um, we'll also just follow up with you. We just want to have some discussions about, is this training working well? What could we have done to improve it? Those sort of questions. So we'll reach out to you as well, just for a conversation in the new year. But that's sort of where we're at in terms of next steps. We will also distribute, we've got um, like a PDF guide, which will just talk through the process of downloading the files. But as Tiffin demonstrated, it should be pretty easy, pretty intuitive, but it's helpful just to have a little guide in case you go to do this in a couple of months time and you've forgotten. Are there any other sort of immediate questions? Um, but if not, we'll sort of wrap it up and then obviously just reach out to us as things come up. Not a question, but just a really quick comment, Laura. Um, when you are sending through the whitelist of your um, URL for your LMS, just triple check that. Sometimes there's kind of a um, a subdomain or um, 
it may divert when you click the login button to a different URL, and we just need to triple check those um, those URLs are whitelisted and that they're correct. Um, super important to make it making it work. That's great. Um, there's also a question, which is not a silly question because I wouldn't know how to answer it either. So I'm hoping I can flick it to someone else, which is how would I know what my LMS domain is? I'm hoping whoever is responsible for your LMS would know that. Is that the right answer, Cal? If you log into the um, LMS, it should be the address in the um, bar at the top. Um, and if you send that through, uh, yeah, if you're on your home page, uh, don't go into a specific course or something like that. But if you log in and you're on your home page, um, it should be that URL. We just need to make sure it's not slash user or something like that. But Tiffin's pretty good at looking out for those. So if you log into your LMS um, and then copy that URL in the from the top of the browser um, and send that one across. Perfect. Thank you for saving me there. Um, and thank you so much, everyone, for your participation, for your questions. It's great to see that there's good discussion in the chat. Um, as I said, following this uh, session, we will send through a PDF which just has a little bit more information about, uh, well, it sort of just covers what Tiffin really already showed you. Uh, and happy to have further discussions. Uh, we might set up a meeting. Tiffin will just send you the contact details for Claudio and I have forgotten Candace. Candace. Perfect. Candace. Yeah, so I'll, <coughs> I'll just you. send that. So you've got the email addresses and then Tiffin, if you could organise a time to reach out to them, that would be really fantastic. Sounds but good. Thank you. That's sure. everything. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Thanks, Thank Laura. You. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.